I'm a final year engineering student. And over the last five years, I think I've done like 95 or 100 different exams. So I'm going to share with you how I search for these exams, what my schedule and calendar look like, all the different study techniques that I use, how I plan my day and strategies that I implement for when I'm studying alone versus when I'm studying in groups. Let's start off by looking at my calendar and showing you how I plan my studying days around my exam days. I'll give you an example from September to December 2019 where I was in my 3B term. And I'm showing you that example because that term is known to be the hardest term for engineering students. So let's bring out my calendar. For every semester, I create a four month timetable at the beginning of the term that includes all my deadlines and gives me a clear view of everything I need to get done. In red, you'll see highlighted are things like exams and midterms. In yellow, I highlight all the assignments, projects, and lab reports I have due. And in green is where I highlight the job interviews that I have coming up. And I include these first in my calendar because these things are non-negotiable and need to get done. Later on, I'll add my study sessions in the calendar around my exam times. I'll plan time to hang out with friends and work out in this calendar as well. In addition to my calendar, I'll list out all the deliverables I have for every course I'm taking and make sure to include the due date and how much it's worth out of my final grade. Now that you have a good understanding of what the overall calendar looks like and all the deadlines we need to hit, let's start building our schedule. I'll begin by taking screenshots of my Google Calendar and importing those images into GoodNotes on my iPad. You obviously don't have to use an iPad, you can handwrite it or hand draw it if you prefer. Second, I'll collect all the course syllabuses for all the courses I'm taking and I'll look for all the things that my professor expects me to get done and I'll mark those on my calendar. That way I have a clear idea of everything I need to get done because I check this calendar almost like every day. Then I'll add additional stuff like social events and job interviews as they come. But this way, when I see everything I need to get done on my calendar, I can plan time accordingly to prepare for those things. Then two weeks before exam time approaches, I'll start planning my exam study sessions. Usually I'm pretty confused on everything being taught in my engineering courses in the first month. So these next two weeks are absolutely critical. For my midterms, my school likes to put all five exams back to back in one week with no breaks between exams. And to study for them, I use a method that I like to call the inverse study technique. This technique involves using spaced repetition to make sure that I don't forget what I already studied. In my first week, I'll spend one study day for every exam that I have, just sort of catching up on all the material. For example, I'll study for this exam on the 7th, this one on the 8th, this one on the 9th, etc. Now I have nine days left to prepare for my five exams. So I'll start from the exam day and work my way backwards, spending roughly like two days for every exam. Finally, the day right before the exam will be spent studying for the exam I have the next day. This ends up adding up to like three or four days for every exam. Now, the courses that I find relatively easy, like MSI 261, for example, I'll spend less time on it so I can focus more on the other courses that confuse me and that I struggle with. You'll also notice that when I'm planning my study days, I try my best to space them out so I can take advantage of space repetition. That really helps me remember things and not forget them as easily. When you learn something new and don't review it, the stuff you studied will follow this dashed line exponentially until you forget it completely. Every person is slightly different, but most people tend to forget 50% of what they learned within the first 24 hours of learning it. But if you reviewed what you learned every few days, the retention increases until it flattens out after a few study sessions. For example, for my ME322 exam highlighted in blue, I spaced out my study sessions by studying on the 9th, 15th, 16th, and 22nd. This approach is so much better than cramming all my studying the day before the exam. Anyways, this is a study approach that I use to plan all my study dates for all my midterm exams. And I also apply the same thing when studying for my final exams as well. Luckily, my school doesn't put my final exams all back to back, so it's a little less stressful than my midterm exams. Now that you have the schedule with all your study days planned out, let's talk about what you should actually do on those study days. And now because engineering courses involve a lot of math, equations, and problem sets, the more practice you do, the better you'll become at understanding these confusing engineering concepts. For example, let's look at my ME322 course. I'd start off by having a quick look through my notes to understand sort of the bigger picture of the course and try my best to understand the class examples he talked about in class. I'll also add question marks next to topics that confuse me. This usually takes me like an hour or two. Usually this engineering course is of anywhere from five to 10 problem sets that you can do as practice for all the concepts that you were taught in your engineering courses. I'll usually spend the second half of the first study day as well as the second and third study days to do all these problem sets and complete them to the best of my ability. 
And if I finish some of these problem set questions earlier, I'll look over the textbook and try to do some additional textbook questions as well. When I come across a question that I have no idea how to do, I'll usually look at the solutions and try to figure it out from there. And But I'll also make sure to put a star next to the question. That way I know to come back and redo this question later on to make sure I can do it without looking at the solution. On my fourth study session, I should have all my problem sets done by now, and I should have a good understanding of all the material taught in the course. Now, I'll spend the first half of the last study session sort of reviewing all the questions that I struggle with earlier, and then I'll spend the second half of the study session creating a cheat sheet or a summary sheet of all the material that was taught in class. This summary sheet or cheat sheet is essentially a piece of paper that contains all the information that was taught in class and all the information that I'm expected to know for the exam. It will include a lot of equations, diagrams, flowcharts, etc. Its main purpose is really to give me a big picture of everything I need to know. And this usually shouldn't take you long, maybe like a couple of hours. Finally, if I have some additional time before my exam, I'll make sure to redo some of my problem set questions that I did earlier, especially the ones that confused me the most. The reason this is so important is because exam questions are very similar to problem set questions. All you gotta do is just make sure when you're doing these problem set questions, you're not memorizing how to do them, but you actually understand the concept behind what is going on in the question. Now, when it's like a couple hours before the exam, I usually don't study in that time. I just take it easy, relax. I'll maybe have a quick look through my summary sheet, but I wouldn't really stress myself out you know, a few hours before the exam. Now, you should have an organized study schedule as well as a plan for all the things you're expected to do on your study days. But should you study alone or in groups? Both have their benefits and drawbacks. But if you find a group to study with that isn't too talkative and every group member has the same level of understanding, then I recommend studying in groups. Just make sure that your group isn't constantly rescheduling your study sessions and no one is distracting you because when you guys are studying, it should be fully studying and not hanging out. The reason I recommend studying in groups so much is because when you face a confusing concept, instead of you trying to figure it out on your own, you basically have more than one mind trying to figure out this concept. And more likely than not, if there's a concept that confuses you, someone else will probably have a better understanding of it and be able to explain it to you, making your engineering courses a little less stressful. But that's it. This is how I've been studying for my engineering exams for the last five years to be able to get high grades and end up on the Dean's List. And this is it for this video. I hope it brought you value. If it did, please make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.